Hey guys, what's going on? This is my review for Thor Love and Thunder. So, Thor Love and Thunder, the new MCU movie directed by Taika Waititi, who directed the last Thor movie, Thor Ragnarok, recently came out and I got a chance to watch it. And this is my review. This review will have spoilers, so here's a warning about that. And yeah, let's just get into it. So, first off, I want to start by saying this movie has had a lot of mixed, uh, mixed reviews and a lot of people feel very differently about it. And there's sort of a side where if you're into the silly stuff and the funny stuff of Taika Waititi and of the MCU, then you're going to really like this movie. And if you're not so much and you're looking for something more serious, you're not going to like this movie. Now, I'm happy to say that I do fall on the side where I actually really, really liked this movie. I thought it was quite good. I really, really liked it. But that it's one of the more controversial Marvel movies where a lot of people aren't liking it and a lot of people are. It seems very split down the middle. It only has like a 68 on Rotten Tomatoes. And yeah, so it seems pretty split, but I'm happy to say that I did really like this movie. Now, I will admit I did I didn't quite love it. I think I do like Rag I love Ragnarok, so I like Ragnarok a little bit more. But I do I'm still very, very happy with this movie. I thought it was so funny. It was, it's, it's you know, it's obviously one of the funniest MCU movies, which I don't have a problem with. I don't have a problem with jokes in the Marvel movies, as long as they don't cut like serious moments, which this movie didn't. So, yeah, I'm happy. I'm. I thought it was quite funny, and it was. Yeah, it's not a perfect movie, but it's very. It's very fun. I know you're gonna hear a lot of reviewers say that. Oh, it's very fun. It's a fun ride, but it really is. You know, Taika Waititi's style was really make the Thor universe and the whole reinvention of Thor since the first two Thor films and the first two Avengers films. Taika Waititi really reinvented Thor and made him a much different, much better character than he previously was. Um, he was alright the way he was before, but the character definitely needed a change. It needed something different, and that Taika Waititi provided that. So I'm so I'm, I'm very happy with that. I love New Thor, and this movie is just an extension of how good New Thor is. I, Chris Hemsworth is really funny. You know the thing I like about the Waititi era Thor is that it allows Hemsworth to be really funny. And Chris Hemsworth has shown in previous movies like Vacation and. Ghostbusters, 2016 Ghostbusters, which honestly, I'm not going to lie, that's a guilty pleasure of mine. I actually don't mind the 2016 Ghostbusters, but yeah, that's not about, that's not what this is about. But he's very funny in those movies, and Waititi's Thor can be very funny. He allows Hemsworth to be funny and show his comedic side, which I think is the biggest strength of this movie is the comedy, obviously, but it's Hemsworth in particular who makes the comedy really stand out. Now, this movie introduces Mighty Thor, Jane Foster. It brings back Natalie Portman from the first two Thor movies, who we all thought she was gone, she was done with. But back in 2019, I think it was 2019, uh, Taika and Marvel announced that they were bringing her back as the Mighty Thor. A lot of people have a lot of mixed receptions to her coming into the Thor persona. And I, you know what? I, while I did have a little bit of problems with Portman's performance in this movie, I thought she was, she was, she was fine. You know, she sort of she did what she could, but I feel like Mighty Thor was never fully realised into like a, like a fully, you know, she was never fully realised into the Mighty Thor. It always felt like it's Jane playing with a hammer. I guess that's sort of what it felt like. She definitely had cool moments and amazing action scenes. Action in this movie is fantastic, but she definitely had cool moments, but. Overall, I feel like Portman and Jane Foster never really came fully into the Mighty Thor persona because there's, there's a very, she's very different in the comics from what I've seen and heard, which I don't, I don't read comics. I know a little bit about them, but I know that this, they're adapting the Mighty Thor storyline and apparently it's much, it's done much better in the comics according to a lot of people who read them. And I, I, I haven't seen them, I haven't read them, but I agree that this was not the best. But I feel like Portman did what she could with what she was given. So yeah, Mighty Thor, she was cool. She could have, I think she could have been better. But she was definitely really cool. She was fun to see. Um, Valkyrie is fantastic. I just want to get these first characters out of the way before I talk about the, you know, the big character. Um, 
Valkyrie was great, Tessa Thompson was fantastic. I think she is one of the better additions to the MCU in recent, like the past five years. She's really funny, she's just, she's fun, she's badass, she's really, she's really fun to watch in action scenes and stuff. I think Valkyrie is definitely a, a great character who I'm excited to see more of in the future. She didn't really have much to do in this movie, she got a few emotional moments about her backstory, but you know, there wasn't much to do, but she was funny and she was fun to watch, which is really, I'm just looking for a good time, I'm not looking for groundbreaking cinema, which I know a lot of people say, oh that shouldn't be an excuse for the MCU to give us subpar things, but you're allowed to have fun, like things don't, you always don't have to look in depth for things, it's like, you're allowed to watch these movies and just have a fun time. Now, yeah, so Valkyrie was great. Tessa Thompson was great, of course. She's fantastic. Korg was a fucking highlight. He was so funny. He's, he's voiced and motion captured by the director, Taika Waititi. He's so funny. He's actually hilarious. The, there's a scene, this, well, I have spoilers, I already said that. There's a scene where he sort of dies and then Valkyrie straps into the straps, straps his face to the back of her head and he's talking. It looks like he's got a mustache. That was hilarious. I was laughing my ass off through basically this entire movie at Korg. Korg is just so funny. Anyway, now, Zeus was great, you know. The Russell Crowe Zeus was a little bit of a joke, but I don't care really. I don't care. I wasn't looking for big badass Zeus, which we did sort of get in the post credit scene, which I will talk about. But yeah, um, Zeus was, he was funny. He was really funny. Russell Crowe was great. Um, I did report like a while ago that Russell Crowe was going to be in this movie so I'm glad that that was true um yeah he was great but I'm going to talk about the standout now which was Gore the God Butcher Christian Bale he was I have some complaints but he was fantastic and my complaint is we were not given enough of him we could have had more and we could have really fleshed out sort of his motives which we we knew his motives we completely knew them they start they they got that set up right from the first first sequence of the movie. I understand that, but I feel like we just should have got more time with him. He really did not have a lot of screen time, but with the screen time he was given, he absolutely shined. I thought he was fantastic. He was amazing. Christian Bale was a fantastic actor. He was a lot more like sort of energetic than I assumed. I assumed he would be more like a stoic sort of badass, but no, he was more energetic, which is Christian Bale. That's Christian Bale. He really is a fantastic actor. So, yeah, I was not expecting that, but it's a welcome addition to the movie. Now, with what, what we were given of him, we weren't given much, which I wish we were given more so we could see him killing gods, so we could see him going after all these, you know, these gods and killing them. Because that could have, that could have been such a such amazing sequences, like where he kills that giant, like, god, I don't know, that it was in the trailer, it's the giant god where he's lying on his side and he's big and white and you know what I'm talking about. Imagine if we got a scene, a sequence where Gore is just slaying that beast, that god. That would have been incredible. But it didn't happen and I know a lot of this movie was cut down which I'm going to be honest you can sort of feel. Apparently there's a four hour cut of this movie, it's been cut down to an hour and 59 minutes. And you can feel that because I want to say this movie does it has a strange sense of pacing, like it feels that like it very much rushes to the end. It it goes really fast, but in like a, not in a good way. Not where I want more, but like I feel like I need more. Like it's, it's not, it, this movie needed another half an hour. Just sprinkled throughout the whole movie, another half an hour worth of stuff. That's what I feel like it needed, because it really did feel like it rushed to the end. So yeah. We also did not get a lot of the Guardians as well, which I was excited for. And what we did get them with, what we did get with them was awesome. It was hilarious. It was the Guardians, you know. But it was, it wasn't, it wasn't much at all. They're gone within the first ten minutes of the movie. So, yeah. Um, another bit of the movie I loved though was the goats. There were screaming goats throughout the entire movie, which I thought were fucking hilarious. They. It, yeah, that was, the movie is very funny. It's obviously going to be very funny. A lot of people don't like that. I don't care. I love the humor. It's very funny. So, yeah, we did not get a lot of the Guardians. I think we needed an extra half an hour just to add some more, add some more to this movie because we did not get enough. I feel like we didn't get enough. And the way the movie ends with Thor adopting Gore's daughter, 
was just I didn't expect it, but I kind of do. I kind of understand, and I don't mind it. Like, I when he first is like when it's first shown to us, like he's getting, he's making our food. It looks like he's gonna send it to school or something. And I'm like, what the, what the hell? That's 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 that does that's not Thor. But when I understand now that he's like he's taking her around the galaxy to like help people, and like fight, you know, bad guys with it. Fight, like yeah, fight bad guys and help people throughout the galaxy. That's that's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that change. Now, I also want to talk about the post credit scenes, which the first one I think was cool. I feel like we should have got Hercules in the actual movie and not just a post credit scene. But it was cool. He's played by, oh God, Brett Goldstein, I think his name is. He was in Ted Lasso. I, I loved season one of Ted Lasso. I have not seen season two because I just have not felt like it. But yeah, the second post credit scene is, uh, I have some problems with it. Because in the, in the end of the movie, Jane dies. And it's a nice emotional scene. It's a nice end. I didn't think they were going to kill her. I thought she was going to replace Thor. But no, they killed her. They decided to kill her, which I'm, I was fine with. And it was done well. And I was like, okay, that's emotional. That's a nice death. I guess Jane's dead now. And then it's all undone in the second post credit scene where she's entering Valhalla and she sees Heimdall and it's like oh, she's not she's not dead you can try to say she's dead but she's not dead she's just she uh, it's it's I don't like it I didn't like the second post credit scene you can't that Heimdall's death now means nothing you know if, if Odin's there Odin's death means nothing because they're alive you can't say they're dead when they're not they're alive they're just on another plane of existence that's like saying that um let's say Okay, let's say in Doctor Strange, right? So there's there's our universe and then there's the Illuminati universe. That's like saying that everybody on that universe is dead. No, they're just on another plane of existence. It's stupid. It's whatever. I don't I don't know why they did that, but yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, those are my thoughts on Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, I liked it. I didn't love it, but I did really like it. I thought it was done well. So yeah, um, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the movie down in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.